Uh, all right. Uh, so yeah, like I said, um, well, for those of you who already watched the first video, if uh, hopefully that comes out in a decent amount of time uh, before this one. Uh, but yeah, so today I'll be summoning for Landy. Um, for one, you know, I think it's 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 sort of common practice. You always want to just summon for limited units, regardless, because you know you're never just going to get them randomly. Um, do I think Landy is going to be like super great? Mm, not necessarily. Um, she does look kind of interesting though. Uh, maybe having her on um, Rengar's like the the idea with Landy, right? Well, I'll probably talk about her a little bit afterwards. Um, after I summon and all that stuff, and then uh, you can you know draw what conclusions you want from there. Um, but yeah, so like I said, if you're here for the if you're here for the summoning video, it's probably because you want to see the summoning more than uh, me talking. So I'll talk at the end and, and we'll see. Uh, what are my plans? Uh, I have enough for pity and a half, or a little more than pity and a half. Um, I don't really I don't know if I want to pull more than one of her. I, I want the artifact, of course, because it's limited. Um, but if we don't, I'll have to really think about it. We'll see when we get there. Uh, but I really only intend on just getting one. Um, we'll see how early, like if we get one early, we'll see, we'll see if we want to go a little further, push our luck, but, uh, I really kind of want to hold on cause, uh, we're looking like we've got some interesting things coming up. Um, uh, but yeah, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, let's just do the free summoning for today. Let's see if we get a uh, nothing on camera. It'd be funny if I just like the one day I, I show my daily pull, I get like a, um, <laughs> an ML five star, something like that. Uh, also, you know, I've got 9,000 or about a thousand short. I think I could probably get that. Uh, so this week, yeah, he's got two weeks left. In a week, you make about let's let's pretend let's live in fantasy land. Let's pretend you make about a hundred um, galaxy or, or mystic bookmarks in a uh, per guild war. I don't. I make about like seventy to to eighty something like that. But let's pretend it's like a hundred. So that's three guild wars a week. Uh, we have two weeks, so that's six guild wars, which is six hundred, right? So that puts me up to uh 900 9700 and then you know hopefully refreshing the shop and whatnot um plus the 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 crystals i get from arena and all that stuff hopefully by then uh, i'll have the 10,000 uh the thing i'm most concerned about like for now i'm not going to pull on vivian cuz i don't care about vivian like i have i've had vivian since she came out uh, even with the exclusive equipment i'm still not like really too interested in building her um and none of this stuff is valuable like i don't really need this um, I could always use more Zerato imprints, but I'm not gonna pull just for Zerato. Uh, don't need her. I already have both of her maxed out. Him, I mean, you know, he's not very good right now, but uh, he might be eventually. So, might want that, but I really don't care enough. The rest of the stuff is whatever. Who cares? Um, <laughs> the one unit I have the most like copies of for some reason is Kisei. She got some buffs, so that's pretty cool. Um, which I think is interesting because she came with the balance patch. Uh, here, here we go. I'm talking before the summons again. Anyway, but this is this is kind of relevant to summoning. But she she uh, she just recently got uh, buffs from the balance patch, and she's coming. She's being released here, right in the Mystic rotation. You know who else got a balance a balance adjustment in the patch? It's ML Araminta. And after Crow, there's a rerun of a uh, five star. So now I'm like, for one, I'm for sure now I'm I'm kind of forced to wait till this last one. Uh, this last rotation, but now I'm kind of worried because uh, it's it's a hard not it's a hard toss up for me between ML Crow and ML Araminta, so that's going to be something I'm going to have to really debate for a while. Um, uh, for now, I'm just going to ignore it, and not think about it because we don't even know if it's if it's Araminta. Um, but uh, if it is, that's going to be a really tough choice because I really like those. For one, I mean, I already wanted Ar Araminta. Uh, I already really wanted Araminta, but now she's got buffs, and that's you know that's even more insane. Um, so yeah, unfortunately we get this, uh, this thing is so horrible. I have like five, four or five of these and, and no one uses this. I don't know who I'm supposed to use this on. It's just garbage. But um, yeah, like it's 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 going to be really hard to be able to like sit there and just say no to ML Armenta. Now, what I'm hoping for is kind of a similar situation to the um, RB banner where I summoned him decently early. Uh, and a lot of these bookmarks I have now are carryovers from what I didn't spend there. Um, hopefully I can like get that same situation. I mean, it's a bit greedy, but hopefully I can get that same situation here. Um, and then pull for ML Araminta afterwards. Uh, that's kind of like what my hopes are. Obviously, you know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I'll get lucky a second time, which is the thing that is concerning. So ultimately, I think I'm going to go with the higher... Um, 
it, it's a theoretical thing. It's, it's it's in terms of like for those of you who know probability and statistics and whatnot. And I, I might be using this wrong if you do know it uh, better than me. Um, <laughs> so much for my uh, uh, all that all that time I spend in school studying statistics. But um, the higher expected value, right? So I can either save them all and guarantee just a one one ml unit being Araminta, or I can go for the the riskier play that has a better that has a better possible outcome, which is going to be the ml crow and the Araminta. Um, and I think I might just go for that one. I mean, uh, for those of you who watch my um, Fire Emblem videos, you know I have uh, Greed from Fumble at Alchemist down down in the uh, um, well left hand corner, I guess. Um, so I think it's appropriate. Uh, yeah, so I'm probably gonna go with that. I'm just gonna summon for Crow, whatever's left over, if there's anything left over. Um, pull for Armintha. So that's that. Um, so yeah, so, yeah, sorry, enough about that delay. Uh, let's get into this. Uh, 950. Oh, I probably should. Oof. It's gonna suck. Hold on. Let's. I need to go check. I'll be right back. And I need to go check my uh, hero box. Okay, we're back. Um, I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually really grateful for this uh, this box thing here. It's like so useful. Um, you just like save so many units in here that you don't really need. Uh, there's some in here, like obviously these. I have a Mursa who's level who's max level three, but I need like one more Mursa to like feed her into herself and then turn her into a four star and then from there I make her a five star and, and, and build her but that's kind of what I'm waiting for um but yeah I mean there's just a lot of stuff in here though a lot of this stuff is like I already have I can just use a lot of this stuff as fodder but I'm not like in a in a hurry to make uh, five or six stars right now so they're just kind of sitting in there uh Roman's here for Broman but yeah anyway like let's not get sidetracked um yeah so here's this let's uh let's get in here and then start summoning for reals this time Um, also, it, it, it's kind of interesting. Um, I, I will have to eventually, but it's it's nice that they they separated the uh, the artifacts and the and the gear, or yeah, the gear and the artifacts is not taking up the same inventory space. But mine is still kind of um, the same, right? Like I, I still have the basic one hundred. I need to like I've been lazy to spend Skystone to like max out the uh, the uh, artifact inventory, which I will which I will need to do eventually. But yeah, something to consider. Oh, come on, please. No. Uh, what four star artifacts do I need? I just need the Steadfast Gatekeepers. Just need to max that one. Oh, I guess maybe I should show this. I mean, it's probably the first thing you want to show. Uh, let's go to the lobby real quick. Okay, so let's come over here. I want to point something out too. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Um, select our PRO. We're going to settings. Uh, check on Skystone. Okay, so that's what this is. So this is how much paid Skystone you have, and this is how much free Skystone you have. Um, what, what's, what I want to point out here is that your, your, your free Skystone is spent before your paid Skystone. So from every video now going forward, as long as I don't spend any money, uh, this will always be 3,500, and I'll probably be free to play for the foreseeable future. So this will not change. And this, so this, this will, it, it's kind of interesting because this gets depleted first, which I think is, is kind of good because that way, like, it shows you that I didn't just like buy a bunch of Skystone, spend it all on bookmarks, and then I come over here and it's like, oh, I spent all the paid Skystone, but I got a few free Skystone. They'd be like, oh yeah, I'm free to play, right? So it, it's it's kind of like that. So you gotta keep you know you keep track of this paid Skystone. This won't leave until I finish this, and even then, like it'll probably still have like one at the end or something like that. And you can see whether or not I paid anything. Uh, but this yeah, this three thousand Skystone is like just basically. It's probably been there since like the beginning of when I started this game. Not not the beginning, beginning, but like you know I bought that uh, rank up pack and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's 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 what that is. Uh, and I, and I guess I can show you for those of you who don't know that it is that way. So let's so I have let's keep track here real quick. Let's keep track of uh, 1547, right? So let's come over here and refresh the secret shop real quick. Uh, there's no, oh cool there. There's one. Uh, so 1547 so we refresh the, the secret shop let's go back here uh, let's go over here oh my gosh okay 
47. So you see it dropped by three. So whenever you spend Sky Stone, it takes it from your free Sky Stone first, which is kind of interesting. Uh, usually in many games, it'll take from your paid Sky, your, your paid currency first, and then leave the free one. But I kind of like this. It means that like, if I when when I you know I've been kind of dumb to be showing this. To, like I keep forgetting to show it every time I do so many videos. I just kind of get in there. But yeah, for any of you, you know, it's like every time I show this, you'll see this three thousand here, and you'll know that like. Uh, it, it's a good way to, to understand this. Like, yeah, I, I, I'm not 100%. I've not been 100% free to play this entire game, but um, I don't really buy a whole lot of stuff these days. I just buy whatever's a good deal. And th those like good deals kind of ran out a while ago. Like the the rank up pack. Like if you're gonna spend, you know, a decent chunk of money, like you know, 30 bucks worth, uh, the rank up pack is actually the the best, probably the best deal. Like it's 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 amazing. Um, I don't know if I bought the second one. I might have to go look at that. But uh, yeah. I usually just buy whatever is a, a uh, good deal. Um, let's see what we get here. Come on, the artifact. Um, I, I find it kind of sad. Always, like every time I think about limited artifacts and and what, what you know, limited banners and such. Because um, I remember like a lot of people pulled for Dizzy. Like, who knows how many they 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 spent trying to get Dizzy um, and her artifact. And I remember when, like, that was the first banner I pulled on, like, I, when I first started this game. Like, I came in during the uh, the collab. I missed out on the biking one, which is fine, but um, the, the the Dizzy one is where I started. And I just, like, pulled on Dizzy for a little bit, because obviously you don't have that many resources at the beginning, so I didn't go to Pity. But I just kind of pulled on it for a little bit, and then I got, you know, the artifact, and I got Dizzy with, like, probably less than maybe, you know, 50 summons or something like that. Like, nowhere near Pity. Um... So and you know you can kind of you can kind of see, like if you like oh my gosh my my account has had dizzy basically since like day one theoretically, oh come on, uh, has has had dizzy since basically the, uh, the, day one theoretically so it like you know th there you go you've got a um <laughs> a massive start to your game like it, it's hard to understate just how big an impact dizzy has on on your progression in this game AOE uh, good for farming early on. Good for clearing excessively hard stages. Like it, it's good. Like don't like, <laughs> yeah. Like it's one of the reasons it, it, she basically skyrocketed, skyrocketed my account at the beginning. She made so many things so easy. Uh, but yeah, so here we got the artifact. That's pretty cool. Um, so when, when we're talking about limited artifacts, ideally you want at least two. I, I mean, you don't really want to pull for two. You don't want to keep going, but you kind of want two. Um, you want to limit break it using the bottles and then just hold two separately i'm kind of an idiot and i and i just um fed all my rengars into one i think I, I pulled like three total um but yeah so that was kind of stupid on my part um now i don't have an extra rengars uh, so i have to decide who's going to be using it between ssb and landy it's probably going to be ssb for a while but as i get better gear i imagine landy will uh one day end up taking over in that and uh with the taking over the rengars okay See what we get. There's actually not really any four stars I need. Oh, there we go. Okay, so if this is the second one, that'd be pretty cool. I just need that in Albers's, honestly. Yeah, so that's cool. Um, <laughs> I guess pretty lucky today. It's kind of weird too, because it's like I was—I got really lucky on the Fire Emblem summoning video, like insane luck. Like, well, 50-50 <laughs> luck, right? Uh, for those of you who did see that, I. I I got, I got five stars, but not the ones, uh, not the ones you might have want. One might have wanted, um, but yeah, about fifty of them were pretty good, and or fifty percent of them were pretty good. The other fifty percent were like kind of weird, uh, strange off banner units. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we're not getting a whole lot right now. I'm actually interested. I hope we get a Nemunas. Uh, Specialty change. I think uh, who, who's next? Was it Doris? Yeah, Doris was next. I did not. Do I did not know Doris had heals with the defense buff. That's actually pretty insane. I might have to like look into building her. Um, for those of you who saw who saw the Guild War video, I only have like three healers right now, and and she looks like a pretty interesting one. Um, yeah. So might have to check her out. I wonder what they're gonna do. I, I remember somebody was talking. Somebody wanted a gloomy rain. I think it's gloomy rain. Uh, the one with the the light one, right? The one that's kind of like ML Zerato that transfers buffs and she can't be sleeped or, or stunned or whatever. Let's see what we got here. 
Uh, wow, gotten a few of these Waters Origins. It's pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, like I have a lot of Soul Weavers, of course. I have, I mean, I have made Chloe, but I don't use her for the fact that, for one, um, she doesn't have a cleanse. It's hard to be playing this game without a cleanse these days. And uh, let's see. If it's another um, Waters Origin, okay. I'm about to stab somebody. Uh, here's Lena. I'm wondering, I'm kind of thinking about running Rosa Hargana maybe on Landy because of the uh, CR boost. Like what I think uh, might be good for her, okay. What I think might be good for her is a lot like, uh, yeah, like I said, I, I talked about her a little bit before and here's more <laughs> Watcher Shuri's. Um, I have both of them triple S imprinted already. So that's kind of funny every time I pull one of them. Um, we talked about this a little bit earlier when she was coming out or, or just around the time where we learned about her. Uh, she reminds me of like a more damage dealing, damage oriented um, Cerise. Like you want to build her fast and uh, decently damage dealing. Where Cerise does like you don't want to focus on damage; it's more like speed and effectiveness. You want to build. I feel like you want to build Landy with speed and damage, um, because basically, like, and then you know, you want to you want to pick your spots with her. Like you know, she's not something you can just take into everything. Um, you want to make sure you take her into situations where it's like, okay, this team. Is gonna have a lot of uh, buffs up, so I can basically S three like every turn. Um, that's kind of the way I see her, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how she ends up being. A lot of people are kind of running her like tanky, maybe on de on counter or like kind of bruisery and and, and and you know taking taking advantage of the um, the damage from her uh, passive. But I don't know. I feel like, I do feel like like probably I mean <clears throat> probably speedy, healthy, and decently damaged dealy is what I would go for personally. Um. You're gonna to want to focus a lot more on crit damage on her. Like, get as much crit damage on her as possible because that way you're multiplying the attacks, the attack, the passive from you're mul you're multiplying the damage from her passive, right? So not only are you getting fifty percent of your attack from her passive, you're also multiplying that fifty percent by your crit damage. So if it's like three hundred, it's basically turning that um that that boost up, you know, by a whole lot. You're basically that passive is basically giving you one hundred percent fifty, one hundred and fifty percent extra attack on top of you know all your attack stat and all that stuff so it's one of those things where it's like what's the word there's a word for it right it's uh damn it i can't remember the word but you basically want to multiply your multipliers <laughs> is how is how that works so if you're getting a lot of attack from somewhere boost the crit damage and if you're getting a lot of crit damage somewhere kind of boost the attack stat a little so they can like multiply each other evenly and get a, a, the maximum return from both ah, there was a word for there was a word for that it's, it's like it's your opportunity cost right so because you're already getting a lot of attack, you want to... Well, it's not really opportunity cost. That's, that's kind of something else. But anyway, since you're getting a lot of attack from the passive already, basically just my my thoughts there is uh, focus on more crit damage. So it's looking like we're going to go to Pity here, I think. Which is okay. Um, we got two artifacts, so I, I can't complain. Um, and I still have a lot of I still have a lot of bookmarks. I don't know why I have so many bookmarks uh, going into this, honestly. Um, it was probably just because I was like hoarding some bookmarks for uh shoe and then i decided that i was like nah i wasn't really that into getting shoe and then um i started hoarding bookmarks again for uh k-ron and then i was just kind of like eh, i don't really care too much about k-ron because uh, about halfway through the k-ron banner they were like oh yeah we're uh, there's a limited hero coming after k-ron so i was just go okay well i guess not um plus i like landy i like her artwork i like that she's got a freaking gundam back there it's pretty cool um what was the thing i wanted to talk about that was another thing I wanted to mention. Oh, I guess, like, people have been kind of talking about Luna a little bit because she's, like, one of the only limiteds that's not really seeing any play ever. Like, she was already kind of falling off, but, like, at least she... Some people used her in Wyvern, but now you need debuffs, so her damage is not very valuable anymore in Wyvern. So she, she, she really has no place anymore. She's one of the main uh, ML unit or uh, limited units that is, like... I don't know. Just I feel like just hurting for for not for for not you know having a place or ever time to use her, um, and I think what might make her make it uh, might make a good buff for her would be just to uh, make her passive active at all times, like all four effects, because you get crit chance, attack percentage, defense percentage, and crit resistance all at thirty percent. I think just by making that like full time, uh, full time whatever, and not. Uh, how many bookmarks? I have 30 summons left and I have 500 bookmarks. It's kind of weird. 
Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, but yeah, just make that passive like active at all times. Now, that might be a little further, a little too far, but I think, I mean, it's better than just leaving her in the dust and having her be like a worthless, um, basically a worthless uh, limited unit. You know what I mean? Like, at least some people are using uh, Holiday Euphine for um, her burns and all that stuff to kill like Riolus here and there. I haven't seen them very often, but <laughs> I, I hear they are being used for that. And I wouldn't doubt it. I, I don't think it's like 100% inaccurate to, to to say that. It does seem like a pretty good idea. I've used their against Rylet sometimes, but it's not always as consistent. Because you only get like a 50% chance to to, to uh, burn on the S1, so it's kind of like eh. Um, but what else? So she she's kind of there. People are kind of using her. I mean, at least, uh, what's her name? Um, the fire guy. Like, Deanne is being used all over the place, and I wonder, she might fall off a little bit, thanks to Landy. Um, Soul is being used in just anything with high PvE, PvE scaling with high health. Uh, nope. Um, and Banshee, uh, uh, Biken is being used for Banshee teams. Oh, that's exactly what I needed. Uh, Crozet's the only 4-star I need, so I can um, finally uh, feed them into my ML Crozet and turn him 5-star, and I think he's he's on his way to 6-star now, so that's pretty cool. Um yeah, excellent. So basically, got what I needed. Um, I got him, and I'm gonna get the uh, the landy at the end. Um, but yeah, so like, like, Ban like uh, Biken's being used for one shot Banshee. Elfelt is the other one that I really think something needs to be done about because she doesn't do anything. Um, I'm I'm glad like Shogun stopped talking about her. Like, it's just to, like I mean I, I haven't watched any of his videos in like a while, but like. I don't see him talking about her or trying to like push her onto people anymore. Like I don't know what was his problem. I don't know why he was so obsessed with how broken she was. Like, yeah, it was so weird. Um, hopefully none of you like uh, fell for his ridiculous ramblings. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I have her. She's just sitting there. She's not six starred. I didn't really want to waste the resources on it. Um, but yeah, like she just isn't very good. I don't like. You're you're basically flipping a coin on whether or not she can even kill somebody with the one two combo. Um, like, what is up with that? Like, you're, you're expending two. You're expending two abilities to kill one person, and even then, it's a fifty fifty. Like, like why not just use someone like um, Melissa, right? Who has a one two combo, but at least you get to guarantee. Like, you know, it's basically a guarantee they're gonna die. Not to mention, you also have immortality. And then, if you know, if you survive long enough. You can soul burn the S1 at zero health and then do, you know, insane amounts of damage with that. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just it's just odd uh, that she's... Whatever's going on with her is going on with her. I don't know why she's so, like, bad. Uh, but, yeah, so it's basically um, Elfelt and... Uh, what's her name? And Luna are probably the, the two lowest on the tier list in terms of limited units, like, if we're looking at limiteds. Uh, so yeah, it looks like we're going to pity. Let's see if we, hopefully we get anything, something else too. Nope, that's that's all right though. Uh, but yeah, like, is is the suggestion that making her passive active at all times, uh, all all four effects active at all times, is that a bit much? Maybe. Um, she she has the potential to be very strong. She's got a defense break on her S one. It also hits super effectively to everyone. And then her S or her S3, that's what I mean, sorry, her S3 has a defense break and super effective against everyone. And then her S1 is also probably one of the highest damage dealing um, just abilities in the game, period. Um, like, I don't know. It's, the fact that her S1 is so variable in, in what it does is something to, to, to consider. Um, you want to like, and especially like her S2, like... It, it, you can kind of control it to some degree, like when her, her passive, you know, triggers which one and, and how to like keeping her up over certain thresholds and stuff like that. But it is still variable and there's still a lot of things that are out of your control. So if like they ignore her or like they, they hit her too hard, um, you lose the damage on her. And now she's just sitting there trying to, trying to survive with her passive and she's not doing enough damage anymore. Um, and then like, you know, if you heal her, I don't know. There's just like, it's too reliant on your enemy doing something when, you know, so... You have to worry. You have to worry about that interaction, and then worry about like randomly not hitting people well enough with your S two, with your S one. Um, so yeah, I think that might do her some good, um, but it might. It's probably going to irritate a lot of people because 
it's always funny because everybody complains about everything no matter what what's going on right so we were we were in a speed meta for a while and then everybody hated the speed meta and people still hate the speed meta uh, and then the solution to the speed meta is kind of like being tanky bruisers and now everybody's complaining about how it's a big tanky bruiser fest meta and it's just like i i don't know what you guys want i don't know what kind of meta you guys are looking for because either you're fast and you're killing people or you're tanky and you're surviving and then you're killing people who are fast to kill people um i don't know but anyway um adding her to the pool of, of tanky units um and and bruisery units is is i think a good role would be a good role for her but uh yeah people are going to complain uh, that oh yeah another especially like maybe people who summoned for um for Shu because she basically serves a similar purpose to Shu like uh she she can be a, a tanky bruisery damage dealer and like granted she doesn't have the uh, what's it called she doesn't have the penetration on her S two or the buffs from her S three but I mean she has a defense break that's two turns that can be soul burned uh, for massive damage that hits super effectively. Um, which I think in a lot like for those of you who've used Luna in PvP before, you know that like that ability hits really hard. It's just that you don't ever get to use it. It's hard to use it a lot of times in the ideal situations because uh, maybe you don't have like an attack buff, or you know, babe, a lot of times she just dies before or all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's something to consider. Um, but yeah, so I guess we can talk about Landy now. Um, for those of you who, who uh, we're just here for the summoning, I guess the summoning's over. We can just kind of talk about her and what um, what's going on with her. Um, I guess we'll just start because like her S one is kind of boring. Uh, cause all it does is give her CR, so I'm probably gonna mola this. Um, this is the one thing you need to mola, I think, because like here, here here's what people I think people need to understand. Like if you're bringing Landy, you need to make sure you bring Landy into a situation where she's gonna S three basically every single turn. Um, maybe not a hundred percent every turn, right? But more or less every turn. Like you need to bring her, you need to have her built as a deterrent to all of these buffing teams. So if they start picking a lot of buffers, you're like, oh, I don't have to worry about stripping. You can have those buffs, and I'll have my Landy um, S3 penetrating defense with the Rengar specialty drink, right? So you need to have Landy there to to to, um, to threaten those buffing teams, um, right? So that's kind of that's kind of like the way I, you need to use Landy. A lot of people just want to use her everywhere, and they're like, oh, well, it's like you get her S your S3 off, and then you're gonna have the S2 for a while, and then you get your S3 again. It's like, well, don't bring her into those situations, right? you need to make sure you pick your spots with her. And, and that's kind of like what I, where I like the meta is going right now, where you can't just pick units everywhere. It's like, oh, here's this new unit. It's really good in, in all situations. Um, that's kind of what we needed. That's kind of what SSB's problem was. Is, is she came out, and she's just basically good in everything. Um, so the game had to kind of evolve around her so that there's counterplay to her. Now, a lot of people are, are, are kind of upset that like there's so much like SSB-specific counterplay. But it's kind of a, an issue of like those had to have been there before SSB came out, and then SSB comes out. And it's like okay, she's good in certain situations, but you know there are certain things that counter her, and that's kind of the same thing with Landy. Is like she came out, she's coming out in a very good uh, position where it's like uh, she's not here to be good in every situation. She's here to be like you know useful where she's useful. Um, and that's kind of one of the things that people don't realize uh, when you're talking about like picks and bans and 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 those kinds of things. You need options like Landy and Rowana and and all these other units where it's like they're sitting there um as situational units where it's like okay i'm looking at the draft and they're reactive right so you guys are picking based on each other's draft right now one of the issues with rta right is people aren't really picking based on each other's draft a lot of the time it's just like first turn alencia uh first turn arby or well, i don't know i don't i don't see a lot of arby's these days but like first turn alencia or first turn uh mlcc or first turn tywin or first turn uh, i guess maybe crown now but like, you know, and, and of course, I mean, those are good, right? But like, no matter when you pick Alencia, you're not really considering what's on their team. You're just like, okay, Alencia's good and I'm taking Alencia forever, um, right? And, and it's good to have units like that sometimes, a lot of times. Uh, but it's also important to realize that like, one of the, the best things about RTA is the, the picks and ban phase, right? I mean, I like, those of you who watch, I don't know about how, if, how League of Legends does it, but I imagine they do it similar to like um, Smite. Like I play, I don't play a lot of Smite, but I watch a lot of Smite uh, Pro League stuff. Um, and I watch a lot of Paladin Pro League stuff. And one of my favorite uh, parts of just watching that game before even the game starts is the picks and ban phase. I like seeing who they're who they're picking, how they're reacting to each other, um, who they're banning out after game two, after game one, seeing how they did, uh, taking away things from them. Um, and I think that's that's one of the. I mean, I think we all for all those of uh, most of you should probably be watching the um, what's his name, the 
shuffles his tournaments uh, basically i think they're every month or every every so often anyway every so often uh that's what's cool to watch the the the, the best two out of three best uh five best of five best of seven matches is the idea uh, i don't know if they'd have best of seven i think it's just best of three and then best of five yeah uh, but that's what's cool about watching them is, is for one, you start picking things to, to start off going blind kind of. Now, in that case, a lot of people, like well, like any competitive game, right? Like even in Smite and all that stuff, people don't just pick and ban uh, meta units. They pick, you know, it's like, oh, I know what they what they have built. I know what, you know, they're good on. Maybe we should take some of those and leave some of the more, like, more, quote unquote, more broken characters open because they're not so comfortable with them. And that, that's kind of how um, RTA is as well, like. People go into it, and a lot of the people in those tournaments already kind of know each other. They they face each other a lot of times, um, so you know they'll look over across and be like, "Okay, I know he's got this unit built really well, so I should ban that out, even if it's not you know as high in the meta tier list, uh, just because I know they have that." And then you know playing out the game, and then maybe on round you know, the second game they play, and then, and then you start looking at other bands and other other picks depending on you know what they ended up having or not. Um, so yeah, that that's kind of what I like about Landy is is. She adds more counterplay to the game, and and I'm looking forward to more units that are like that are more like this, where it's like, where are they good? Where do we? How do I react to their picks and bans? What do I have in my box that's ready? Um, unfortunately, it does make it more high end PvP because, like, Landy's gonna come out, and not everybody can afford to pick a unit to to invest in a unit. Uh, that's good for certain situations, right? Like, if you play Smite, you don't have to like you have to invest your time and practice, but a lot of units are like. You know, that's it. You just have to invest your time in practice. Here, you have to invest like gear, which you don't always have, molas, which you don't always have, and all kinds of other stuff, which you don't really have. And then you also have to get good at using the unit because a lot of people just, like, a lot of people don't really realize that, like, actually playing the game is there's skill to it. It's not just like, oh, I'm just going to do this, blah, 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 and there, you know, just auto. I mean, no one autos in RTA, right? You don't auto. You don't just pick your units and auto. Every decision you make while you're actually playing is also valuable. But in this game, so there's 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 like that's probably like 20 percent 80 percent is is the gear you got beforehand the molas the investments and all that stuff beforehand um so that's kind of something to consider but anyway let's just get back to landy i just kind of a rant about uh, rta and all that stuff uh, but yeah i like landy i think uh she's gonna be pretty good um as long as you pick your spots with her i mean a lot of people are gonna be upset that like you know you have to pick your spots with her that you can't just like bring her into every team and then have her like stomp on people it's like you really need to be paying attention to what you're, they're playing you know you're playing regular arena you need to look on their side and be like oh well they've got a bunch of they got a bunch of buffs so i'll just bring her in there and have, have her sweep a bunch of people um and that's even before considering whether she not whether or not how well she can do that right uh, we don't actually know how much damage she does well i don't really know how much damage she does right now but we'll, we'll find out in the course of time but i think she will do enough damage i think she'll be decently um she'll hit pretty hard especially uh in rta where people are starting to stack more defense um, with Rengar specialty string penetrating thirty uh, percent of that, um, and then just hitting people over and over again, it's going to be pretty annoying. Uh, so her S two, let's take a look at her S three again. I guess uh, fires all enemies, grants caster increased speed for two turns. So this is already pretty insane because, like I said, I, I think you want to build her pretty fast. So with the speed buff, she's going to be cycling this S three constantly again, depending on the team. Uh, when fighting spirit is full, consumes all of it and increases damage dealt, which it's already going to be dealing a huge amount of damage because you're probably soul burning and you've got all your molas here. Um, and combat readiness of all allies for 15%. Yeah. So that's pretty good. I mean, it brings everybody with you. She takes the first turn, does a decent amount of damage, and they can't counterattack, right? So Charles gets kind of stomped on. Um, it's kind of sad how much Ch uh, Charles' is Elbrus interaction is affecting Ken. Because Charles, and I feel like I do feel like it is Charles more than Ken. But I mean, Ken might be or ML Ken might be uh, a reason too. But the thing is, like, Ken is such a meme these days. Um, because like nobody cares about Ken anymore. Like for one, Crow already regular Crow already counters Ken. So just just bring Crow into Ken, have him get low, and then have him just like stomp out of Ken. Um, ML Crow just came out who doesn't crit and penetrates all defense so he basically just gets the free fire against Ken's uh, there's a lot of units coming out now that have like you can't counter attack them with AoEs which is what Ken is for you bring Ken so that it discourages AoEs from the enemy um, because he's just going to one shot them back right so that's kind of I think that's kind of interesting to think about uh, but yeah so it's kind of sad to, to think uh, that's happening but it is what it is uh, so this skill can counter counter can't trigger a counter attack. 
Uh, the combat readiness to everybody is is pretty phenomenal, uh, as well as herself, mind you, on top of the speed buff. So, like I said, I think you want her fast and just, like, constantly S3-ing. Um, and then, like I said, all this damage dealt and all that stuff. Uh, then, so let's take a look at her passive, which is probably one of the more interesting things here. Uh, increases by 10% after attacking. So that's just after attacking in general. Uh, it has a, has a uh, what's it called, stack up to 5 times, so that's 50%, right? Um, and then, like I mentioned, the more crit damage you have, is the better, because you're basically multiplying this multiplier here, uh, and then your numbers are getting bigger. Um, so at the end of the turn, at the start of the turn, every time it's her turn, she gets 10 Fighting Spirit uh, for every buff granted. So if you're running CC and one person with immunity, that's already 50. Yeah, that's already 50, and she's at she starts at 50. So she's at 100, and you're s 3 with this, right? Uh, so that's something to consider, right? Like, it doesn't take a whole lot to uh to, to to get this ready some people are thinking uh it's all right to run her slower uh which i think is fine um because you can run her slower and let them put all their buffs up and then have this do more but like i said like an mlcc and someone with immunity is already like it's too late you're getting stomped on um by this ability um so s2 or s s3 uh 15% boost plus the speed and then you get to s3 again for another 15% boost um, so basically the whole team just got a free 30% boost while getting, while they got hit twice, uh, and 30% defense penetration because of Rangars. Um, but yeah, uh, let's go here, down here when it's full reset skill cooldown. Yeah. And, that, and all that stuff. So what, what's the one thing, the one thing is it's going to happen though, is you're going to S3, uh, probably S3 again. And then unfortunately the, the second time you're only get you only get 50. So you're going to have to do this and, and, um. You know, it is what it is. But you get 20 off of this, which is already kind of ridiculous again. Um, so basically, it's like S3, S3, S1, S3 again. And then, <laughs> yeah. So that's that's always something to, to keep in mind. Uh, her imprint is attack, which is, of course, going to be great on her. Um, I don't, I'm probably not going to, like, imprint her. But yeah, I mean, like I said, I don't have the speed gear. Like, for one, I really shouldn't. I really should, like, if I had the gear, I really should have already had Cerise built. But <laughs> I don't have the gear. So I don't have Cerise built. Um, so it's going to be hard to, to really um, build Landy uh, for, for my account. Because, like I said, I don't have that speed gear. Uh, I might take off. Yeah, I have no idea. Um, like I said, the, the crit damage is good if you're building her to do a lot of damage um, without the Rengars. But given the Rengars, obviously you kind of want to consider running uh, an attack set or, or just boosting her attack more than her than her crit damage. Um, but like I said, it depends on, on what you want. Like, do you, do you value the defense penetration more than just, like, the overall damage? I think the overall damage might be pretty good, too. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see her numbers. We'll see how she does, um, like, without Rengars. We'll see what kind of damage she does without Rengars. And then we'll see how much damage she does with Rengars. Uh, and then, you know, go from there. I think she's going to be really good during, um, what's it called, in Guild Wars, though. Um, well, maybe not super good, but decently good, because she's going to S3, uh, S1, and then S3 again. Uh, and she'll be pretty fast, and you know she's, nobody can counter her, right? Um, but yeah, I think her, her place is going to be an RTA as a counter pick when people start picking units like, um, obviously, ML Crow. Um, and other units that have just like a bunch of, uh, a bunch of buffs, right? Because like ML Crow... He gets AoE'd, and he gives everybody a, a shield, so that's already four buffs. And then on top of that, he, if he S1s, he has a speed buff. So you're guaranteed, like Crow himself guarantees you 50 uh, Fighting Spirit for Landy, which is already pretty good. Um, and that's, you know, if you want to consider running her uh, her artifact. Let's go take a look at that, I guess. Uh, so I guess we'll do an ML summon too. Uh, where's the artifact here? Uh, how come I can't look at it? Um, so the start of turn, yes, to an enemy, yeah. So this goes up to what? Uh, let's just go look at it in the journal. Uh, well, let's do the summon here real quick. We're not going to get anything, though. It's kind of interesting that they made the uh, bookmarks, like the regular Galaxy bookmarks. You can just buy them from that screen there. And I'm just going to summon now because, I mean, for one, ML Crow's already in the game, so he's summonable. And then um, for two, like, obviously I want Araminta, and she's obviously summonable all the time, so... Uh, let's see what we get here. Yep, we didn't get anything. Um, please be a Harado. Oh, it's a Doris. I think I needed one more Doris, which is pretty cool. Uh, blind, which is pretty decent. Uh, so this is her main ability. Let's take a look at this one first. Oh, 
wow, this is actually pretty good. And like I've said, I've said this a few times already with regards to uh, enemy or ally health scaling healer healers. As this game goes forward, uh, and we get tankier units, this is actually gonna this is you know health healing based on their their health is just scales better into that. Um, so yeah, this is this is excellent. Uh, yeah, I might actually start making Doris, but let's go see what her S two does. Recites celebration magic, recovering health of all allies. So health recovery and continuous healing and increased defense. Oh wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. Oh wait, is this only heal one? Oh yeah, one ally. Okay, so that's fine too. Anyway, um, she heals somebody. This this heals everybody. Uh, four turns, and then you can. Uh, boosted by three so basically it'll be back up when the defense buff runs out uh, three turn de defense buff is no joke um yeah this is actually she's pretty excellent i think I'll, I'll i'll have to build her so hopefully you guys can see that uh later um but yeah i was just yeah i was just talking about doris uh, for those of you who watch um i think tk gallant he's been making videos again uh he made a video with her and I, like i saw that and i was like yeah that's that's pretty good i just never really looked at her kit or anything like that i think she got some buffs too so that's pretty cool um, and like, like we said, she might be getting a specialty change at some point. Uh, but who was I, what did I come over here for? Oh yeah. We wanted to go look at the journal to look at the, um, the artifact. Uh, I just want to see what the max numbers are there because basically, and I, and I said this, like, as soon as this was announced, like we're looking at, this is basically a, um, uh, Ranger Alexis basket, but probably better. Right. So 8% chance per buff. So let's go back to, C uh, Cecilia again. Cecilia's run are, are there's already four barriers and a lot of times Cecilia's end up running the immunity and if not them someone's probably got immunity right it's, it's hard to find anybody with no immunity so that's already that's already five right five times the the eight has a 40 that's that's a 40 percent chance to grant increased attack and greater which like I said that's a that's what the Alexis basket proc is I mean the the crit chance no one really cares about the crit chance uh, but it's really the, the the greater attack buff so there you go. If you wanted a uh, uh, Ranger exclusive Alexis basket, there you go. Um, and this isn't even including like other uh, other buffs, right? So let's say like immediately if you're running, if you're fighting against like a what's his name or what's her name? Um, well, anybody really, but uh, what's her name? The girl. Uh, why am I blanking so hard? Dn, sorry about that. Dn on her own gives three buffs to every unit: the shield, the crit resist, and the um, the attack buff. That's like that's twelve, that's twelve buffs for one whole team, which is about what twelve times eight, eighty, ninety six. That's a ninety six percent chance to get the attack, the greater attack buff. Uh, and then after using attack, she gets ten percent uh, combat readiness. Uh, so it really does depend on which one you want to go with uh, on her, I think, anyway. So let's pretend, let's go back to, let's just pretend like we don't have to worry about these numbers because ideally you're, you're probably going to get it, most of us are probably going to get it to 6% and then we'll, you know, I'm going to get it to 6%, um, the halfway mark, the, the plus 15 on the artifact and see how she does with it. But so let's let's consider the 6%, but let's consider, you know, what happened. Let's, let's just pretend in fantasy land that it's going to trigger every time. Um if 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 well not not trigger every time but like if it triggers right turn one this is why it's important to see what kind of damage number she does whether it's better to build um for rengars in which case you build a lot of attack and not worry so much about the crit and the other stats so that it penetrates or should you be building for her to do maximum just straight up uh raw damage to hit people really hard uh because if if that ends up being you know more you know most better pardon the uh, poor english but if that ends up being like the way to go then this really is the the artifact for her right because 75 percent attack increase on top of the massive 50 percent increase you're getting from your attack stat with like if you're building her for 300 crit damage that's a lot of multipliers like i'm just gonna say right now like for those of you who know math um who know like statistics and all that stuff like and and have played things like Warframe or play things like uh, Borderlands and stuff like that. Other other you know kind of grindy games. You know that that's like you know that's that's a salivating amount of like multipliers going on right now um, for this situation. So it's one of those things. Like I said, is this huge multiplication 
not going to be enough to deal with how much like for one shields defense uh, defense buffs higher defense um what's the other thing uh higher defense aureuses adamant shields all that stuff like is the the 30 percent defense pen gonna outweigh just how much multiplied damage she can do like not to mention she has a soul burn as well um you know what what are we looking at here but that's not all that's also not even including the fact that like we're taking that go back to the same scenario turn one she's gonna s3 right maybe soul burn and she's, she's not gonna have the passive unfortunately so that that's kind of sucks but it is what it is she's not gonna have the passive um but she's gonna have hopefully the the greater attack buff and the the ability gives her not only speed but also 15 percent plus the 10 percent from this artifact that's free you don't even like you can't level it up or down or anything like that like gosh damn dude that's 25 percent cr boost plus her 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 now higher speed and she probably went first so she's gonna she's gonna lap like half their team um for another s3 which is now 10 percent more attack uh hopefully uh you've got the um the greater attack increase again um and then you're, you're boosting yourself for another 25 percent you basically if you if you take those two turns separately and then take the, the the cr boost you got from that you basically stole half a turn somewhere in there um going into turn three for her um so that's something to consider um i really think like like there's, there's a lot of people who are just kind of going into it going oh rengar's uh, gonna be the best on her and then just like throwing up their hands and going yep, yep that's it and then just leaving but I really do think, depending on how much damage she can just, like, raw damage she can do, which I, I, I'm i kind of assuming is a lot. I might be overweighing, mind you. Um, I, I do think that this might be one of her better artifacts. Um, I mean, we all know how often, um, what's it called? Alexis Basket tends to proc, so it's something to consider. Uh, something to consider. I, I, I do think this is going to be a very dangerous game to be playing with her. Uh, that's not even considering the fact that if you're playing RTA... Um, She's gonna like you know you could probably build her tanky and fast there and like some damage, uh, but as art as you know uh, what, what is it called the um, as frenzy gets to stack up, not only is frenzy stacking up and giving her more damage, her passive is also you know basically full by the time frenzy starts kicking in. So you're doing you know like I said insane amounts more damage and like like maybe one or two stacks of frenzy if you get. If her passive is full by one or two stacks of frenzy, and you get the greater attack buff on this, like you might just be able to one shot an entire team without even thinking about it, um, depending on what they they're, they're drafting, of course. Um, and then you know what other units you have as well is like you know you've been hitting them over a while because it's not you're right it's never just her by herself, uh, but you know so yeah. Um, so I guess yeah that's it. Uh, just wanted to go over the units, wanted to go over uh, wall of order, why I think that it's not so clear cut that she's just just put rengars and go forward um it's something that i think we really need to think about um what kind of damage you'll be doing and and maybe i'll well i really probably i really probably should have had this uh, prepared ahead of time is looking at the uh the, the damage calculator the math damage calculator um to, to see kind of compare that damage and see what we're, we're looking at um but yeah this video is already like 50 minutes so i really want don't want to uh do that but i mean most of you can do that go go look at that calculator Put in a bunch of numbers that you you see a lot um, that you tend to, to see a lot. Look at what how you can build her. Look at what what's going on, and then see what kind of numbers you're getting out of there. Because everybody's going to be different, right? Like I can show you some numbers, but maybe you can't even reach that gear, or maybe you have better gear, right? So it's really not a whole lot of point. Because I mean, I could show it to you, and you're probably just going to immediately go over there and and start messing around with that number too, that number generator, that number um, whatever the, the the calculator as well. Uh, so that's that's kind of you know like what I'm saying. Just just go take a look at that. Um, see other people use her in practice see what kind of damage we're looking at um but i do think like i said it, it isn't i don't i don't feel it's clear cut that it's just like oh yeah rengar's though i do think rengar you know i do think rengar's in the mix is what i want to say I, I do think it's in the mix i'm not trying to be contrarian and say oh everybody who, who wants rengar who is just going to put rengar's on her is an idiot no, no no that's not what i'm saying um i am saying that like it's in the mix as one of the best artifacts for her but i, I think it's like we really need to consider that. I mean, ultimately, though, what might end up being the case is that, like, they're both about the same, right? In terms of, like, what kind of damage you're dealing. Um, and, you know, you just, oh, well, I'll just go with the uh, with the Rengars. Because the thing about Rengars is, like, here you're getting a greater attack buff, but you can just give her an attack buff from somebody else. And you're only losing, like, 25% um, attack increase. Um, and, you know... 
defense pen is always like you can't get defense pen from anywhere else unless someone's defense um, breaking somebody. But at that point, you can just kill them with anything. Um, but yeah, so uh, if they are kind of similar, it might be worth just dropping this artifact, putting on the Rengars, and then just having someone else give her an attack buff. And even if it's not greater attack, it's not that big a deal. Um, but yeah, so uh, hopefully you guys uh, got decently lucky. Um, the like. In terms of luck, I mean, we all, most of us are going to pity everything anyway. Uh, but in terms of luck, hopefully you got the artifact. Uh, that can be that can be rough uh, trying to get them. So, yeah, uh, I guess good luck to you guys out there. And uh, hopefully somebody uh, enjoyed this video.